In 1759, Mary Wollstonecraft entered the world in the Age of Enlightenment. Inside her own home, however, she experienced a more disenchanted reality. Her abusive and alcoholic father owned her brow-beaten, weak-willed mother, beating her and the children regularly while squandering the family's money. Surely there was more to life than this, thought Mary. People in her day raised daughters with only the skills of domestication which Mary despised. Rebelling first in her heart, then in her mind, she went on to share her rejection using her voice. In her moody disposition, adopted through dysfunction and injustice within the home, Mary would climb trees to stare at the sky and gaze at the moon. Accessing elevated spaces offered Mary a clearer vision, a wider, more expansive perspective to what the future could hold for her. Common to many great leaders, achieving personal liberation is never enough. There is always a drive to bring others along. Mary kept her gaze on freeing the minds of young women. She believed there was so much more beyond a young woman's doorstep, and she would soon commit to being one who would fling to swing open the door. Mary's personal independence arrived when she began to attend school. To her resentment, education was a gift only boys received. Girls were instructed on needlework and simple addition, while boys read Latin, practiced advanced mathematics, and learned about history. But rather than accepting what is, Mary began to push the boundaries of what should be. A paradigm shift arrived when Mary began to learn about astronomy. It had only been three years prior that scientists believed the Earth was round. Adopting a newly formed quest for knowledge, she became determined to unravel other misconceptions and mysteries. Challenging and posing questions to those who had arrived made Mary quite inconvenient and unpopular. Although her vibrant personality drew the thinkers and philosophers to support her ideas, Reaching full independence at Hoxton Academy, Mary began choosing a new way of looking at the world, with humans as naturally good and possessing the right to be free. This was a final untethering from the teachings of her childhood. The church taught her to believe all humans were lowly sinners, needing authoritarians to contain their evil impulses. But Mary's fresh wind of perspective came after she did the laborious work of single-handedly opening wide the shutters of her mind. Freeing her mind was a private victory, but a public victory would not come until after some heavy lifting in the public scene. In the liberal environment education provided, it was still quite clear that young women were destined for domestication and boys were free to study at will. Schoolgirls were expected to balance homework with cooking, cleaning, and caring for younger siblings. And Mary saw one human free, able to launch into an ever-expanding horizon, while another in bondage to a life of predetermined objectives. Things became increasingly agitating for Mary in her early 20s, like the grinding of sand within the oyster in a creation of a pearl, she began writing feverishly under the initials M.W., hiding her identification in order to have her voice heard and contributions considered. It worked. Her opinions countered the accepted truths of the day, and Mary Wollstonecraft slowly rose to public acceptance as a respected political writer. With a situational leadership, Mary constantly responded to cultural norms, gender inequality, and freedoms during the French Revolution. Personal liberation was fulfilled upon rejecting the great man theory she was raised in. Mary's voice became louder as she set her sights on changing the status quo. Her first written work, The Education of Our Daughters, was a defiant letter demanding the intellectual empowerment of young women. Mary was the epitome of servant leadership. As a governess hired to teach daughters of wealthy families, the income allowed her to write items that ultimately empowered nations of daughters. The more she prioritized her values, the more expansive a responsibility she was given. Mary lived in proactive thinking. Out of her own pain and disappointments, she began forging new paths for women, herself included. Although many conservative men and comfortable women publicly ridiculed her, her mission remained fixed, 
to honor the voice she was given and use it to make a better world for women. Mary's interdependence emerged after her publishing editor and friend, Joseph Johnson, aligned his moral motives with hers, forging an alliance that allowed her writings to soar. This synergy helped Mary improve her writing skills and become more effective communicator through writing in a more gender-neutral style, keeping readers focused on her words, not her person. Through this intellectual alignment, Mary completed her most popular work, The Vindication of the Rights of Women, elevating her voice as a beacon of hope for women whose lives were subject to the whims and laws designed by an all-male parliament. Despite being called a hyena in petticoats, Mary continued to use her voice to break the rules that governed women. Her words helped break bondages of oppression, lifted barriers to professional possibilities for women. Her resilience amidst being constantly misunderstood and publicly ridiculed, Mary held fast to the belief she was a participant to a life's work. Learn, 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 learn from Mary Wollstonecraft is how tenacity keeps leaders moving forward in difficult work and how once this work is realized, acknowledging there will be hardships and setbacks to accomplishing this work. She shows us how to be prepared emotionally and intellectually for allowing the strength of the mind to overpower public criticism and keep us afloat with purpose. Lastly, while Mary transcended religion, she remained in good faith without fully seeing the fruit of her labors. Faith helps us stay rooted in our ethical and moral responsibilities, trusting the work we have done will continue to carry on long after we have gone. In her humanity, Mary's faith was temporarily lost several times. Discouragement crept in, attempting to devour her perseverance. But it was a strong and resilient heart that propelled Mary in living out a most passionate and purposeful life. Strengthened by great resistance, Mary Wollstonecraft's life models how even with few resources, abusive upbringing, and limited freedom, we all possess the capacity to carry out a great work that leads others into liberation.